When we think of the Victorians, we think of dark satanic mills, greedy businessmen and Oliver Twist, but there was actually a wave of philanthrocapitalists who sought to improve the quality of life for their workers by building complete self-contained communities which provided better housing and facilities than most normal towns and cities at the time. One of these was John Cadbury, who built Bourneville for his chocolate workers in Birmingham, but by far the most famous of these model towns and cities is this, Saltaire. So join me as we look at this part of Yorkshire's hidden history. By the middle of the 19th century, Bradford had become Worsted Opalis, one of the capitals of the Yorkshire wool industry. Worsted is a type of material made from wool, and by 1841, there were, in Bradford and the surrounding areas, 112 factories and mills producing the stuff. This naturally led to a boom in the population, and in just 30 years, the population of Bradford grew by 78%. However, this exponential growth was at a huge social cost. There were no plans for public hygiene or sanitation or how such a rapidly expanding city could deal with all this new population. Literally hundreds of chimneys were continually pumping out thick black smoke whilst diseases like typhoid and cholera raged. The average life expectancy for an adult was, and I'm not joking, just over 18 years. Only around 30% of children born to factory workers reached the age of 15, and most workers would be forced to work 12 or 13 hour days. Bradford soon gained the reputation for being one of the grimmest places to live in Britain. Trust me, I'd know I lived there for three years. George Weirth visited in 1846 and said this, Every other factory town in England is a paradise in comparison to this hole. In Manchester the air lies like lead upon you. In Birmingham it is just as if you were sitting with your nose in a stovepipe. In Leeds you have to cough with the dust and the stink as if you had swallowed a pound of cayenne pepper in one go. But you can put up with all that. In Bradford, however, you think you have been lodged with the devil incarnate. If anyone wants to feel how a poor sinner is tormented in purgatory, let him travel to Bradford. Dark satanic mills indeed. Enter stage left, Titus Salt. Born in Leeds in 1803, by the 1840s he had become one of the richest and most powerful businessmen in Bradford. However, unlike his contemporaries, he showed real concern for the conditions in the city. For example, in 1842 he discovered that the Rodder smoke burner produced much less pollution than other burners and implemented them in all his factories. When he became mayor in 1848, he tried to make this mandatory across all factories in Bradford, however this was unsuccessful. Realising that he couldn't persuade all the other mill owners, he decided to leave and make his own town. He chose a site a few miles from Bradford and with good access to road, rail and river. There he built his town Saltaire and the magnificent Salts Mill. At one point it was the largest industrial building in the world. It could produce 18 miles of cloth in a single day, employing 3,000 people on 1,200 looms. It utilised a number of clever tricks to reduce the chance of fire and accidents, two major killers in any Victorian factory. It opened in 1853, the first fully integrated textile mill in the world. The village itself was revolutionary. It took 25 years to finish and 850 houses were built, each with its own backyard, proper sanitation, water and gas supply and a private toilet. Now that doesn't sound like much to us today, but compared to what a lot of people were living in, it was luxury. Here's an extract from an 1845 Bradford sanitary report. In this miserable apartment, a man, his wife and four children sleep in one bed composed of shavings. In another house it's written, there are two privies within six feet of the dwellings, from whence the excrement overflows and sends forth an intolerable stench. Ashes, refuse and filthy water accumulates with this and contributes to the most disgusting scenes, truly disgraceful. So his houses were revolutionary. Of course, he wanted to name all the streets himself, so after giving the obligatory one to Queen Victoria, named most of them after his wife and children. But he didn't just build houses, he also built, get ready, a park a hospital, a school, library, a church, almshouses, a gymnasium. This was everything a Victorian working community could need, all provided by the generous goodwill of Titus Salt. He wanted to care for the moral, social, physical and religious needs of the community, and the only downside to this was that Salt detested alcohol. And so there were no pubs. Titus died in 1876 and was given in Bradford the equivalent of a state funeral. On his death, the Bradford Observer commented that 
Titus was perhaps the greatest captain of industry in England, not only because he gathered thousands under him, but also because, according to the light that was in him, he tried to care for all those thousands. We do not say that he succeeded in realising all his views or that it is possible to harmonise at present all relations between capital and labour. Upright in business, honourable in his private relations, he came without seeking the honour to be admittedly the best representative of the employer class in this part of the country, if not the whole kingdom. That's all I've got time for today. Hope you've enjoyed this video, hope you've learnt something new and hope to see you again soon.